With the World Cup in full swing, the eyes of the world have turned to Qatar. With much of the media coverage split between the controversial decision to award the competition to Qatar, is Qatar and the football itself, the history of this small Gulf state seems to have been neglected. So here is a brief history of Qatar. Human habitation in Qatar began some 50,000 years ago, as evidenced by the discovery of some Stone Age artefact on the peninsula. Evidence of coastal settlements from the Mesopotamian Ubayid period have also been found, as well as Kassite Babylonian pottery on the Alcor Islands. The Kassites were a people who controlled Babylon from 1531 BC up until 1155 BC, indicating that the inhabitants of Qatar had established a strong trading relationship with the civilizations of the Fertile Crescent in Mesopotamia. Interestingly, three million crushed snail shells were also found on the islands. Sea snails are essential for the production of luxurious purple dye, an extremely expensive commodity in the ancient world. The trade of purple dye continued into antiquity, when Qatar became a part of the Sasanian Persian Empire in 224 AD. By this time, Qatar had also become a primary source of another luxurious product, pearls. These Qatari gemstones were traded throughout the empire and beyond. Islam reached Qatar in 628 AD when the Persian governor Munzir Abin Sawa accepted the faith and spread it amongst his subjects. The Muslim conquest of Persia a few decades later collapsed the Sasanian Empire and established the rule of the caliphs over Qatar. Under the Umayyad Caliphate, Qatar took advantage of its strategic position to become a major trading center along the bustling Persian Gulf becoming known in particular as a center of the pearl trade. Goods from throughout the Far East passed through the peninsula, with Chinese porcelain and goods from Thailand being uncovered by archaeologists. Qatar found riches not only through trade, but through its breeding of fine horses and camels, for which it became renowned. As the caliphate declined in power, so too did the influence of Qatar, although thanks to its location along the Persian Gulf, it retained its position as a trading center. Until the 18th century, Qatar mainly consisted of small fishing villages, trading settlements and populations of Bedouins who lived a nomadic lifestyle moving around the peninsula. However, However this, this began, began to change, change in the late 18th century, century when Qatar became the power centre of the Bani Utbah tribal confederation, which succeeded in conquering Bahrain from the Persians in 1783. Led by the Al Khalifa family, whose rule was initially centred in Zubara, Qatar was involved in conflicts with the first Saudi state in the late 18th and early 19th century. As the Al Khalifa dynasty slowly moved their seat of power to neighboring Bahrain, Qatar was increasingly ruled by a series of local sheikhs from prominent families. In 1867, disputes between the Bahraini Khalifa and local Qatari sheikhs over ownership of Zubara escalated into a full-blown conflict in which Doha was sacked and almost totally destroyed. This prompted British interest. East India Company officer Colonel Lewis Pelly imposed a peace settlement in 1868, the first British intervention on the peninsula since the East India Company bombarded Doha in 1821 in retaliation for piracy being conducted in the Persian Gulf. Crucially, the British also signed an agreement with Muhammad ibn Thani, which established the Al Thani family as the pre-eminent dynasty in Qatar. It also paved the way for the future independence of Qatar, until 1868, the peninsula had been considered a dependency of Bahrain. It was not long before Qatar caught the eye of another empire, this time the Ottomans. Following the conquest of the Al Hassi region in Saudi Arabia in 1871, the Ottoman Empire occupied the peninsula and persuaded the Al Thani to submit to Ottoman rule. Unsurprisingly, Ottoman attempts to integrate Qatar into their empire were met with resistance. In the form of refusal to pay taxes, and the situation degenerated into a full rebellion in 1893. Qatari military triumph at the Battle of Al-Wajbar led to an embarrassing Ottoman defeat and established Qatar's position as an autonomous country within the Ottoman Empire. Ottoman troops finally abandoned Doha in 1915 and a year later Qatar officially became a British dependency on the 3rd of November 1916. The treaty gave Britain control over Qatar's foreign policy in return for military protection. Qatar's traditional economic product, pearls, was soon to be eclipsed by a commodity that would in many ways define the 20th century, oil. 
1935, Qatar signed a concession with the British-owned Anglo-Persian Oil Company, which guaranteed protection against internal and external threats. Four years later, in 1939, oil was discovered on the peninsula, although World War II delayed commercial extraction until the late 1940s. However, oil revenues soon grew massively, allowing the expansion of Qatari infrastructure. The great sums gained from these revenues caused occasional bouts of infighting amongst the Al Thani dynasty. In 1968, the British government announced its intention to withdraw entirely from the Persian Gulf by 1971. This announcement prompted fevered negotiations amongst the British protectorates in the region, known as Trucial States, over how the political vacuum would be filled. Seven of these sheikdoms joined together to become the United Arab Emirates. Preferring independence, Bahrain and Qatar withdrew from negotiations and emerged as independent nations in 1971. Post-independence, Qatar has seen two palace coups. One in 1972, in which Khalifa bin Hamad Al Thani supplanted his cousin Sheikh Ahmad, and another in 1995, in which Sheikh Khalifa himself was overthrown by his son Hamad. More recently, Qatar sought to increase its standing on the world stage. The country permitted the US to use the peninsula as a base for its operations in Afghanistan in the early 2000s, and Qatar hosts a large US military installation, the Al Udayid Air Base. Its maintenance of good relations with its neighbours has led to Qatar being seen as a mediator in the region, allowing them to broker peace in Lebanon in 2008, in what threatened to descend into civil conflict. The Qatari emirs have also sought to raise the country's international status by investing in cultural projects, such as museums and universities. It has also sponsored Al Jazeera, a news network which has often criticised authoritarian Arab governments and US foreign policy, although criticism of Qatar was conspicuously absent. It is as a part of this effort that Qatar secured the 2022 World Cup, the first Arab nation to do so. However, the notorious corruption of Sepp Blatter's FIFA, Qatar's dubious human rights record, the vast environmental impact of the tournament, and the reported thousands of deaths of stadium workers have cast a shadow over this year's World Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, this has nothing to do with football. <laughs>